Uh, I will give you a short presentation about our company. It is it's not that long, just a little bit about the history, our, our range of products and let's say the products and services that we can provide for the uh, port technology. CEPR is a shortcut of our company name. Uh, it comes from the German name Siegerland Bremsen. Siegerland is the area where we are located uh, in the center of Germany, uh, approximately uh, one hour north of uh, Frankfurt. And Bremsen is the German word for break. But we found uh, several years ago that this uh, name is uh, not good for doing international business. So we made a shortcut saying Siebre is uh, easier to pronounce for, for our uh, international customers. As I said, we are located in Germany. We have uh, two facilities here. One is uh, the headquarter that you can see on the, on the right side. Um, it is located in Haiga. And at this facility, we are uh, machining all the, um, all the components of our products. Let's say there's a, yeah, we are doing milling there, turning, grinding, all the, the CNC jobs uh, are being done at this facility. And we have another, another plant in, in Eschenburg that, that is in the same area where we do the assembly of, of the final products, the painting and uh, testing and um, packing and dispatch. So let's say this is more or less a, um, a logistics center. The company have a history of uh, approximately or, or more than 60 years already. And uh, right from the beginning in uh, 1958, we have been producing industrial brakes at that time customized and then uh, step by step, uh, it was more and more standardized and uh, we're becoming some established some norms and uh, nowadays it is most of it is standardized uh, industrial brakes. Yeah, total production area is approximately 17,500 square meter uh, for the two facilities, for the machining center and the assembly plant. Besides the uh, two facilities in Germany, we have uh, 11 international subsidiaries because most of our customers are, are not located in, in Germany. We are exporting most of our products uh, mainly to the, let's say, international or, or big uh, container ports. So most of our products are, are being supplied to the grain manufacturer and then indirectly to the big container ports in uh, Asia, uh, in wherever in the world. Yeah. And to be close to our customers, we have established step-by-step uh, -step several um, subsidiaries, uh, some in Asia, in Australia, America, uh, as you see in, in this chart. And in all these facilities, we have service people that are able to install our products, do troubleshooting, repair jobs. So it doesn't matter where you are located, you will always find somebody uh, who can uh, repair or maintain uh, our products. Uh, here I have a short uh, overview of the products that we are producing. Uh, I will start from, from the left side where you see the, the service brakes. We are uh, producing thruster brakes that uh, are being used for uh, a uh, hoist system, some container cranes. On, on, you see here on the picture as an example, the, the ship to shore crane, but it is also being used on, on yacht equipment, uh, ASC cranes, RTGs, RMGs. Um, and we are doing uh, storm breaks. As uh, Steve already said, we, uh, we are uh, securing equipment against the uh, storm and heavy wind, but for sure not, not the boats, it is for, for the container cranes. Um, different kind of couplings, couplings for uh, high speed shafts, um, couplings for the connection of the gearbox output shaft and rope drum, um, and wheels uh, for, for the gantry drive of the crane, but also for the trolley drive, rope sheaves, um, emergency brakes, um, hydraulic power stations, and we have uh, developed a known uh, snack load protection system, a sensor-based one. That's about the company and the product range. 
Now I would like to give you a, uh, to show you our, our new development, the latest generation of thruster disc brakes. We call it USB 5. It, and it was especially developed for the uh, use on container cranes. When we started uh, the development of these products, we for sure, as everybody who starts a development, we have checked the market and we were looking around what, what others are doing and which type of rakes are being used at, at the moment. And what we found is that many, many cranes have different type of drives. There are gantry drives, trolley drives, hoisting drives, boom drive, and all these different drives many times have different type of brakes with different functional principle and different and different maintenance requirements and which are being adjusted in a different way and we think that this is giving some headache or let's say some difficulty to the maintenance people and service people at site because they need to understand all these different functional principle and need to understand how to maintain it and how to do service so our idea was to have one brake in five different sizes, but with the same functional principle. So what we have developed is a, a brake that can be installed on gantry drives, as you see the small one on the left side, uh, which is typically being installed on gantry drives of uh, ship to shore cranes, starting with a torque of uh, 100 to 700 Newton meters. Then uh, one bigger size for, which is typically being used on uh, hoist drives of on yard cranes. And then the bigger ones for hoisting drives or uh, boom hoist drives on uh, ship to shore cranes. The advantage of this is that the, all the service team just need to understand one manual. They need to understand once how to adjust the brake and it is also a, a big advantage of uh, spare part stocking because you, many, many parts on these brakes are being uh, identical and it is sufficient if you stock, for example, uh, a brake lining of the hoisting brake, uh, which can be also used for the boom hoist. Um, for sure we have, it is not the only advantage that the brake is available in five different sizes. Uh, we have further improved the design um, with several uh, features. One is um, parallel opening of the brake shoes. Uh, as you can see on, the, on this uh, slide, on the left side, it is conventional design where the brake is opening in V-shape and the air gap between the brake disc in the center and the lining is uh, quite big on the top of the uh, brake lining, but quite small in the bottom. This is, let's say, something that is normal for brakes, but we found that it is uh, better to have it in parallel way. So it is more easy to align the system and also the risk of sliding between the, the brake disc and the pad is, is totally reduced. And on the right side, you see some details of our mechanical system, how and how we achieve uh, this parallel opening. We have also improved the, the spring, uh, the braking spring. Uh, you see on the left side a new guiding system that totally avoids contact between brake spring and uh, guiding tube. It is increasing lifetime of the product and uh, also reducing noise. Another topic was uh, uh, corrosion protection, the new generation of products has uh, <coughs> much better corrosion protection than the previous one. Um, we have new uh, tested uh, new coating uh, procedures. We have used uh, stainless steel for many uh, products or subcomponents so that the brake is, um, let's say, more suitable for uh, installation on in sea environment and harsh environment. Um, because we also see that uh, there are many uh, automated cranes with an open machinery house uh, and the components are, yeah, need to be more cor corrosion, uh, protected against corrosion. 
Another point is uh, we have installed some more sensors in the brakes. The new uh, generation is coming with additional options for status monitoring. Uh, it is starts with load cells for measuring the brake torque, temperature sensors, and different position sensors. And we see this is uh, a requirement of the market and big advantage because there are more and more automated yards and in these automated yards, it is not so easy to to go uh, to the machinery house and check check the components. So it becomes more and more important to have products with uh, status monitoring options, and you can do the the checking from from the service office. Okay, yeah, that's about the new thruster break. Uh, I have a short uh, movie about this break. Uh, it takes just, just one minute and I, I would like to show you just a short summary. Hey, th thank you for your attention. Um, now I would like to hand over to my colleague, Dennis. Thank you, Michael, and thank you for the nice introduction before. Um, my part of our speech is going to cover the SHI emergency brake, um, which is a hydraulic release and uh, cup spring applied emergency brake. It's available in seven different sizes, covering the force range from 15 thousand to five hundred fifty five thousand newton um, first of all the application we assume between 60 and 70 percent of our shi brakes are used in the container handling uh, market that means it is um, mounted directly on the rope drums of container cranes but we also provide it for the mining sector for conveyor belts for example or for different crane applications in steel mills uh, our design of the emergency brake is uh, pretty special. The main point is that there is no direct contact between the uh, piston and the brake lining at the end. So we are using um, our design for transforming the force level out of the cup springs uh, through the outer side of the housing uh, onto four pressure pins. And with those four pressure pins, we uh, forward the force to the brake lining at the end. Um, with this system, we reach two main benefits. Um, the main point is that there is no radial forces onto the piston and onto the dynamic ceilings, which minimizes the risk of leakage. Um, another point is that with those four pressure pins, um, we transform the force very equally over the entire surface of the brake lining uh, to reach a very equal uh, wear. <clears throat> um, two other advantages are the simple and fast wear compensation and our SHI SU table for different disc dimensions and uh, we can provide it with different types of uh, brackets and consoles. With those SHI design benefits, uh, they lead to the customer benefits at the end. Um, the favorable force transmission um, leads to the fact that we can decrease maintenance costs and spare parts uh, long term 
while increasing the safety level uh, and due to the um, to the force transmission itself we minimize the risk of leakage which minimizes itself the risk of downtime while increasing the safety of the, the entire application uh, there is very less maintenance requirements and we are providing um, a package of a kind of flexibility with our type of brake. There are additional options available. For example, there is a special sensor technology or uh, limit switches with different uh, types of indication. We are using different type of uh, coatings and individual designs of consoles and brackets. Um, and we can also provide our brake for uh, low and high temperature application. Uh, especially the low temperature application is something we do often face in specifications from Northern Europe or the Baltic countries, um, Baltic states. Moreover, we deliver the hydraulic power packs. On the uh, bottom left side, you see the three kilowatt version of our power pack. And there's another one, it's the two kilowatt version. Uh, which I would like to focus on on this presentation. It's a very compact design. Uh, there is no additional piping required in the customer's machinery house, and it's a well-proven system. So we do steadily increase and optimize our product, the SHI, the hydraulic power pack, and the connection of both since 1998. And it's a very cost-effective um, design. With all those points being said, I would like to summarize it into another short video, which we would like to provide to you. And we wanted to make sure to make it relatively.